Let's say we're asked to find the quotient of 3x cubed minus 5x squared minus 32x plus 7 and x minus 4. Because the denominator, or x minus 4, is not a monomial, we have to resort to long division. With any long division problem, there's always two things to make sure of. One, that the powers of the numerator go down, which they do, 3, 2, 1, and no x value here. And also, that there are no missing powers. So here, we have an x cubed, we have an x squared. Had this 32x not been here, that would have been the missing power. So since both conditions are satisfied, we can proceed with long division. We start by writing the denominator on the outside of this L-shaped long division symbol, and then we write the numerator on the inside. At this stage, we're always going to ask ourselves the following question. What do we get when we divide the leading term on the inside by the leading term on the outside? Meaning, what do we get when we divide 3x cubed by x? The answer is 3x squared. That's what we place at the very top, and we start our quotient. The thing on the very top will be our quotient. The, the expression that we are left over with at the very bottom or at the end will be our remainder. Now, once we've determined what the leading term on the inside divided by the leading term on the outside is, and we've placed that expression on the top, we must multiply both terms here by 3x squared. If there are multiple terms here, each of them have to get multiplied by the quotient. So 3x squared times x is 3x cubed. So we place x cubed terms under each other. And 3x squared times negative 4 is negative 12x squared. So I place that underneath the other x squared term. Now you'll notice I put my signs in front of both expressions. The reason why we do this is because at this stage we have to subtract this polynomial from this polynomial. And remember from a previous section, whenever we have to subtract polynomials, we always have to change the signs on the terms that follow. The reason why we do this, or the reason why I would prefer putting the original sign here, is because then the new sign can be placed underneath it giving us a visual indicator that we did change the signs. So when you're reviewing your work, it's a lot easier to see, hey, did I change my signs? Yes, okay, so maybe the mistake is somewhere else. Once we've changed the signs, the remaining two terms in the problem just come along for the ride. So they'll just be brought down. Now, when we combine like terms, 3x cubed and negative 3x cubed will cancel. 5x squared, which is a negative, plus, remember we're using these new terms after the signs have been changed, 12x squared will yield a positive 7x squared. The negative 32x and the 7 just come along for the ride. Now we're actually back to square one. So we start by asking the same question again. What do we get when we divide the leading term on the inside by the leading term on the outside? So 7x squared divided by x will give me a 7x and I place that at the very top. Now I multiply 7x with all the terms on the outside. So 7x times x will give me 7x squared, a positive one, so I place that underneath my x squared term. 7x times negative 4 will give me a negative 28x, which I place underneath the x term. Notice that these are the original signs. When I subtract, I have to change the signs on both these terms. So the positive 7x squared will become a negative, the negative 28x will become a positive, and the 7 will just come along for the ride. It's just getting dropped down. Now we combine like terms to recognize 7x squared minus 7x squared cancels out. Negative 32x plus 28x yields a negative 4x, and then the 7 just gets brought down. Again, we notice that negative 4x is the leading term, x is still the leading term on the outside. So negative 4x divided by x will yield a negative 4. We place that at the very top. Then we multiply that by both terms on the outside. So negative 4 times x will give us a negative 4x, and negative 4 times negative 4 will give us a 16. 
Now 16 has to be written underneath the other number that we have. Now again, remember we have to subtract, so we need to flip these signs. The negative 4x will change to a positive, and the positive 16 will change to a negative. At this stage, combining like terms allows us to cancel negative 4x and positive 4x. Remember, we're using the new sign. And 7 minus the 16 will yield a negative 9. The way we write our answer is always the numerator over the, de over the denominator equals the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. Now, you can also take the negative and pull it out. Positive times a negative will just make it a negative and have the remainder of 9 in the numerator and an x minus 4 on the outside or in the denominator. Both ways are perfectly fine and both are equally valid.